Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. We knew you would come back because you're so excited for the long-awaited mm -hmm. volume three of the episode of uh, the architecture of UHM Manoa. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we, DeSoto Brown and Martin Despang, will talk about in yes, today's edition of Human yes, we will. Architecture. That's right. And let's jump right in uh, into the first slide because you, I was, um, Sort of giving you a hard time because of your textbook. Oh, you have your textbook. With I've you got soon. my textbook. Here, here it is, right here. So unfortunately, we don't need it. We don't anymore. need it. So anymore. I put it away That's because right. the author Kobayashi had to stop in '82. That's when he published the book. Correct. So we're going to talk about everything. And so the top right picture is, is sort of a suggestion of us or an analysis of why things changed yes. for the worst. Yes. And uh, this is when basically the uh, sort of uh, optimistic America, symbolized by even more John F. Kennedy, and then basically ending with Jimmy Carter. That's right. Was passed on to the uh, reactionary phase embodied by Ronald Reagan here. That's right, 1980. So that's the 80s. And um, I remember when my dear friend and uh, mentor from my Arizona days, Larry Medlin, he told me that the day that Reagan took office, basically all his funding for his environmental research lab was pulled. And, and we get, uh, and we can so see it again today, but it, we don't need to talk it, about yeah. that. So the first, the next picture here is that we actually got spared on that for quite a while, because here's our quad with its latest addition we talked to is about Osipov's um, building here, uh, Saunders Hall, or Portois Hall, previously called. and. Um, uh, I had the talk with uh, Tropical Tutor Bill and Tropic Cure David, and we had talked about it too, that maybe what was supposed to be temporary, I mean, the temporary things sometimes last the longest, right. and sometimes the reason is because they're the best. Correct. So here are these portable buildings that actually might be the most truly mm -hmm. tropical. They're easy breezy, they're elevated, yes. they're out of local materials. They're just right. They're Correct. Just, they just feel right. And they are forming the uh, end one end of the quad in this view exactly. before there was a permanent and building that there. that was next picture the school I'm teaching at. I mean, yeah, not in that are. building, but the previous buildings. That was the architecture school in these portables. Now, thank Matt Moy who provided the large picture and then our previous show guest, Maggie uh, Sarvi Mackey, who provided the top two left ones. And uh, so this this was back in the days, and then next picture is that Magi also provided this one here. There was a very, very famous teacher who designed the building at the very bottom right. This is Joran Utsan. And when he, for similar reasons as many of the architects we're gonna talk about next here, got totally frustrated by his institutional right. client, he needed his therapy, and like many who burn out, they find their peace here in right. our paradise of Hawaii. Correct. So here is Jan Utsan, and the pictures were provided by a fellow of, of Jörn who's credited at the, at the very bottom here. So um, let's see what then happened next uh, on the next picture. Yeah, well, all those wonderful portable buildings, and you know, it was something that I found was, uh, I found was ironic back in those days, was mm -hmm. the architecture school of the UH was located in these portable buildings instead of a magnificent showpiece mm -hmm. architectural building. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and that's probably what they were thinking way back to. And we already referenced a little bit to that topic on the top left. We did a show about architecture and presidents. Yes. And we were saying there's yes. Monticello where yes. it might have been an, an inspiration for right. that sort of classicist thing. Yes, and, right. And maybe equally that, you know, Jefferson wasn't really, you know, trained as an architect. No. It was like a no. militant, right? right? So maybe right. he tried hard, but maybe it wasn't good enough. Uh, you know? Yeah. So um, uh, this building here too, and let's look at it up close next picture. And and this is, this is we talk about makeup, and Bill talks about, you know, how this building has been put together, and we talk about makeup on buildings, and this building needs constant makeup on because it's so ugly, and it's not only surfacially ugly, but it's substantially ugly. And the, the top left is like the most absurdity. This is a huge egress staircase that's all enclosed. They AC that thing. And as you can see on that little picture, in that picture here, this is from a couple days ago, 
they paint the walls in there. So if I would be a student and that's where my money goes and energy is one of the big cost oh, things sure at is. your age, sure I, rebe I would rebel and knock out the windows in there or you know do something. And, and as, as we just said too, you, for an exterior stairway, you don't need to air condition it no. and you don't need to paint it if you leave it plain concrete. Yeah, yeah, Those yeah. are costs you can yeah, do yeah. away with yeah. with an yeah, exterior yeah. stairway. Exactly. And you know, why in the world would you design something like that? And who was the architect? If you can go back for that matter to the last page here. Oh, um, previous picture. Guy, uh, previous, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So here, I basically say the guy, if you go to the archives and find the stamp on the drawings, that's not the architect because we talked to the architect. We'll get to that next. This here was, after all research, designed by a committee. Yes. Or designed by the UHM Manoa campus architect at that time. Right. And he had two sort of program briefs, um, actually three, sorry. One yeah. was it had to be axle symmetric in the quad, stay true to the original sort of idea, classicist idea. Secondly was classicist in style, and third was parking on the ground floor. Yeah. These were the most important things, and that unfortunately led to next picture again, which we looked at before, looked at that, plus sort of this zeitgeist of postmodernism that was about prestige yes. and surface and not yes. anymore about yes. substance. Correct. So let's visit the architect and you were saying, you were saying, well, what the hell was he then thinking, right? Right, the architect. right, right. Let's right. look at that. Correct. Next picture. Well, what they were really thinking wasn't necessarily what ended up being no, there, No, and this fact. is kindly provided by the architect of record who said, you know, what he was forced to do, he's so ashamed, he doesn't want to be associated with, but um, we didn't give up and asked him to overcome that sort of, um, you know, trauma. And with the support of John Harris' daughter, Mayumi, they were going and digging into the archives so how does that like look to you to solve? Well, see, the, what, what I see going on here is one, rather than the completion of the rectangle of the quad, he left it open. So there was an entrance to the quad. Mm -hmm. Two, the building, in fact, is up on the Malka side so that it's next to an existing building rather than taking that space. And then three, on the lower Makai side, there is a nod to the classicism of the quad through a garden folly or a sculpture almost, which is a pillared, but roofless uh, open area. Exactly. And so, as you said, this is porous. Yeah, and so, yeah. it's not blocking anything. No. But I think it is a nice addition to the quad. But and it's almost an interpretation of the of the previous, you know, portables. It's yeah, it sequence. is. sequence is like a That's wagon right. wheel That's sort right. of assemblage of the portables. They're all, you know, single loaded corridors, easy breezy. Look at the lower left of the perspective. You can see it basically facing the quad. That orientation is facing south. You can see overhangs. You can see a shade there. You can see um, pretty much, you know, thin horizontal lines, which is uh, basically jealousies. Yeah. So it was just right. That was a truly tropical, exotic yes, building. Correct. Lots of greenery inside, lots of porosity, lots of courtyard space. But unfortunately, it was shut down with the three bullets Correct. that I was mentioning before. The three requirements. This was not axle-symmetric in the quad. It's yeah. not uh, classicist in style. And, and it's not no devoting parking. itself to the parking. This That's is devoted right. to the people. How bad is that? It's right? terrible. Exactly. Cars are very important. So let's stay with John for a little longer and go to the next uh, picture here because uh, John is a very good exception for that rule of uh, the 80s, uh, you know, having yeah. been not so good. This is, however, you know, late 70s still. And this is the uh, the Burns Hall. That's not to be confused with a Burns School of Medicine no. that ended up down here in, in Kaka'ako. Kaka uh, this one here is more in addition to the East-West Center by IMP. And a very and, skillful one. And it is. And maybe it is because it was before Reagan took over. Yeah. So it wasn't about I'm the movie star, right. which ever since then it is like that more or less. You know, mm -hmm. I want to steal the show. Yeah. He was very much saying I want to be devoted and be respectful to Master IMP. Right. And I'm going to do something along the lines. Yes. But look at the at the nice uh, you know plan and considering the whole composition and not just itself. So it's a very contextual building. Yes. But it doesn't try to suck up to anything you right. know, else. And right. what I was finding, uh, you know, privately investigating when I was with my Yumi and John at the very top in the middle. This is a model, large scale facade model that they still kept. And you can see it looks significantly different to yes. what basically got executed. We ran a show about that sort of element which we called Corbu's Brie Soleil and it had a lot more shading devices which mm -hmm. unfortunately 
uh, you aged and value engineered Correct. and shot in their own foot because yep. they made sense and now they're paying, as we talked, energy is one of the biggest things That's you know, right. that didn't go so well. And there's a picture at the top left I say for uh, John is kind enough to come in and do a separate show and we'll talk more in yeah. details yeah. about all the Good. stories behind, which can't wait for that. It's yeah, super right, exciting. Right. So let's move on uh, to another John building that is one of your favorites because when we uh, next picture, please. When we went out to do our own field work, yeah, uh, you came back and you said, "Hey, this is one of my favorites." This is a, this is a small, modest, as you said. Uh, what is this? The Snyder? No, this is Sherman Labs okay. Laboratory. Okay, mm -hmm. and it's a small, concrete, kind of almost brutalist, mm -hmm. but it's got this nice courtyard, mm -hmm. uh, austere, plain, mm -hmm. but a nice scale. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, it struck me, and I and I yeah. liked it. And it, it, it is, it's in its material, it's postmodern, but in its language, it's very sort of postmodern with a sort of layering. It's like New York Five and this element, but in a very sort of nicely, you know, still a tropical exotic yeah. way. The top left picture is provided by Mayumi and John, shows it when it was completed and the uh, trees are still small. The middle part is the model that's still in his office and the lower one is like it, feels this yeah. time, you know, these days, it feels yeah. nice. It's shaded, right. it's cool, Correct. it's comfortable. Right. It's all of that as it should be. Yeah. So let's move on because in all honesty, there were a couple more architects who were doing a decent job uh, on campus in that area. This is the student center building that looks very sort of institutionally modern, almost brutalist, you know, modern. But when you go inside, surprise, surprise, there there's our courtyards. courtyards. And there's some nice concrete shading fins there. Right. Right. Another example, next picture here, is a building that we already talked about a while ago, the music school, but they needed an addition. Right. So they did that, and from the outside, this is the picture on the middle, on the right. That's how we know it when we drive up to school. We always think, is that a fortress? But thinking back how the, uh, you know, yeah. Alamoana, excuse me, the um, Royal Hawaiian Shopping, Hawaiian Shopping Mall had the same approach, to be very austere, almost like offensive or, you oh, know, a fortress, uh, fortress right. keeping you out. But once you come in, it's like, wow, it opens up, it has a courtyard. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. Yeah. And the last one of that theme here, next picture, is uh, the the uh, um, Hawaiian Studies uh, building on Dole Street, which is sort of almost like a late sort of a ticky uh, twist on, on, on vernacular architecture, right, with the roof lines but yet very modernly uh, interpreted. And uh, you got a courtyard, which is the picture on the left in the middle, which I took uh, quite a while ago. And it's got basalt walls, too. It's got, it's got all the ingredients, of course, but again, it's not in a, in a, in a sort of Polynesian culture center no, no, way no. that wants to pretend to be no, authentic, it isn't. right? It it's isn't. an interpreted, it's a very Correct. nice modern interpretation. And it's modern, it is that, not, right? it's not a traditional building 100%. So with that, we're gonna look what has happened ever since, and for that, we have a new textbook, and if the camera can maybe uh, go to, yes, come back go to, to the, the studio, studio here. So, so we, we I picked up this nice brochure. He got a fold one I'm more not page done right. here. I didn't do it right. So I picked this up in the dean's office here. So this is how our university is marketing itself today. And then nicely sort of outlined the area of UH here in Manoa. You know, and for me for a while, excuse me, not having, still having to learn a lot. I was saying, hey, it's sort of where in Manoa is this yeah. again, right? And I said, it's Coconut Island, it's not in Manoa. Okay, all right. So let's <laughs> go back Bay. to Manoa and let's look what we have from the more recent days here. Yeah. So next and, picture. And, and next picture. And I let you take over and one more picture here. Correct, after that. And I'm going to uh, basically say, um, okay, you're the historian. Stay right. within that capacity. Correct. But time travel, like yes. 50 or 70 years ahead, and yeah. imagine how you would think about these buildings, if you would consider them to be sort of of value, you know, to looking back and say, oh, these were good days, you know, this yeah, is a good yeah, 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 yeah. So well, let's look into that. To, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. next picture, next page. Next picture, okay. Well, what is this called today? This is really kind of a big food court. <clears throat> and it's yeah. called Palms, what is it well, called? It, it maybe start with a history here. Correct. So we, we switch roles, I'm the historian now. Okay. You, know, you look at it contemporarily, well, but it was way back. It was an architect who we did a show about here in the middle where this young emerging talent here where his grandma lives. Correct. And this is very inclusive social housing at the beginning of Kalakaua yep. at King, and Street. King Street. And this was Frank Slavsky. And Frank right. did this awesome, sort of very reminiscent, reminiscent of the other project on the very up here. Yes, there. Which right is there, from right the Blaisdell Center. Yes. The exhibit hall that unfortunately gets torn down was replaced with something that we're not so sure about yet. Correct. And it very much uses the same sort of inverted uh, mushroom pillar system, very tropical exotic, 
now, and you ask what it's called, it's called Paradise Palms. Paradise Palms, and it's now an enclosed food court from being an open structure to being a closed hermetic air-conditioned structure. Mm -hmm. It looks very Floridian to me, very yes. Miami Vice-y, very pastiche -y. That's right. I can see Don Johnson with his pink uh, jacket mm -hmm. walking by. As he should. And uh, so let's move on to the next finding here. The next finding, well, that is something that's not, strictly speaking, on the UH Manoa campus, but it's very nearby, and it is a housing complex that's aimed at potential UH students, mm -hmm. and it's down at the corner of University Avenue and Baratania slash King Street. But then you pointed out when you look up from that speckled pink thing on the right-hand side mm -hmm. of this picture, you see in the center that blue building. And that's what we're going to look at next. Is that uh, correct? And that is correct. And I would say next page. But in both cases, I think they are the architects want to compete with the natural mm -hmm. master yep. of, the, of the natural environment right. and want to build big mountains. But you better be really good as an architect to compete with nature because nature is the master. Uh, that's exactly right. So this building here, what kind of a mountain is that? Well, uh, it looks like a blue glass mountain to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what is this? Pacific Ocean Science and Technology Building. And you were saying you went inside and that blue tint, which supposedly is keeping out too much sun and heat, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. actually isn't really doing very no. much, except making it all look blue. And your face. Yeah, and my, and you everybody, like zombie. Lo everybody mm -hmm. looks like a zombie. Exactly. And, and so you do in the, in the very inside, because given that you discovered a theme, which we were going to unveil at the very end, yeah. And we uh, basically come inside and you say, there's probably a courtyard in the middle. And yes. there isn't. No, there's trapped conference spaces in there. And then around that is this like from a hospital horror mm -hmm. movie film, these like trapped courtyards right. where, uh, yeah. where zombies stories, are. Where zombies go, Correct. exactly. Yes. Yes. It's pretty, pretty horrid. Yeah, and I, I interviewed people. I mean, this is a semi-public space, but I went to do offices and I asked the staff there, and they were like cardboarding up their windows right. and saying, "We get beaten by the it's sun. Too hot. This this glass isn't 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 sh the glue. The blue is more decorative right. than performative. Correct. So maybe that one isn't uh, one That's that you will remember and talk about in seventy years either, right? No, I don't think so. So let's move on. Another chance. Next Another chance. Another chance. Well, this is who, this is the gym. Is no, that, this is not. The gym is coming gym. next, but it has, it has a total similarity to it. At the very bottom right, uh, uh, right you can see it was the Edward Durrell stone building that we talked that's about right. last time that that's someone right. must that's have right. thought that kind of looks outdated and dated. So let's so put we something gotta, in front of it. we got to sort of make it nice in front of it. That's and that's right. called Seymour Holly. And some of us call, me including, call it the microwave banana. Mm -hmm. Because that's what it's, it's kind of curved. It's kind of curved. And materiality-wise, you know, it's probably out of concrete inside, but outside it's all steel and glass, so there's very little local in there. And it's, you know, I think it got lead platinum or something, but it's doing the lead thing in a very technocratic way, in a textbook way, like yeah. checking marks. And way back, all these buildings we were showing in the last though to thrive, right. they're probably all lead, like best lead. They, they are naturally. By, by naturally, by intuitively, right? They yes. knew where the sun is, they knew where the wind is, yeah. and that's all you need to know. That's right. And not computer software that sort of makes you buy into whatever doing stuff Correct. like this one. Yeah. How do you like that little uh, pathway through the building? Well, there? yes, as you pointed out, it's rather a dismal, drab, dark pathway mm -hmm, to enter mm -hmm, into that. Mm -hmm, not a very mm -hmm, inviting one, mm -hmm. and not something it looks like you want to walk into. No, and green is incorporated, but it's very sad yeah. sort of decorative green on the wall in an AC atrium. Correct. Poor green, right? Right, and it's not a courtyard. It's not the outdoors. It's a little so chunk that's been put on the and wall. Since you were already ready to work out, here's your gym. Exactly. Come next. And see, next, next, in the, next picture. And the reason I got confused is because, again, we've got more blue glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's mm -hmm. kind of a thing mm -hmm. that's happening mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And you're just pointing out, well, okay, wait a minute. If this is the outdoors of the beautiful tropics, Mm -hmm. Why are we air conditioning and putting in enclosed spaces to exercise in? We can do it outside. Exactly. And this building is, in all fairness, its orientation is right. Uh, you know, facing south at the very bottom has this overhang. To the east and the west, it got the louvers. But then, uh, you know, there's ventilation. Mm -hmm. And where is ventilation? There is no ventilation. You're trapped in there. Mm -hmm. This is an artificially air conditioned space, as you said. Why not working out in where it's always beautiful to work out? 
and then they want to fool us with it's supposed to have a green roof, which is brown upstairs, and there are these wind scoops who just bring in northern light, and behind the louvers, the AC <laughs> the units AC. are hidden. <laughs> so, and you know, the building already got makeup to begin with when it was born, and it's peeling off, as we right. can see in the center. And you can see all that AC unit, so maybe another one that's maybe not so much. No, no. You know, so not next lasting. one. Yeah, next so next. One. Okay, Information Technology Center, you said this has got to be where all the computers live. So there does need to be protection of them. Yeah, yeah. They shouldn't be exposed to the sun and the air. Yeah. But um, well, well, there's still too much glass there than computers yeah. need. And if you make it totally opaque, it's going to be the Royal Hawaiian Shopping Center or yeah. such an attempt. That's they right. make glass for the people, but the people close their curtains. And then, yeah. you know, you got the sterile generic American sort of rooms in there. And Will Bruder, you know, was assessing it quickly when he was here. And he said, don't wrap louvers all the way around in the same way. That's right. not how it works. We know how the sun is. The sun doesn't want it all the way around Correct. the same way. So let's move on to the next one. Which yeah, is that one? the law school edition. Okay, mm -hmm. the main thing I notice about this, we discussed just before this is, it's got this little exterior framework around it mm -hmm. that's supposed to mimic an earlier structure. And mm -hmm. I said to myself, wait a minute, those are not actual beams protruding out of the mm -hmm. building. Mm -hmm. It's a little cage. Yeah, yeah. So there's no honesty and, to what that is. And the original building was doing it better. It had some closed parts first and then. And it wasn't the primary building element. The primary building element was a courtyard. Yes. So this building here, we're trying to find the courtyard, but the second from the left picture is the center of the space and the hot summer western, you know, um, sunset sun is going to shoot deeply in there. So once again, this is decorated mm -hmm. to be contextual, mm -hmm. but it's very much a hermetic invasive piece. And if I'm not right? mistaken, the glass is blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. And we got one more, yeah, we which got is one currently more. under construction. So we only found these pictures here online. Uh, life Science Building life is under science. construction. So these are just, we don't know what it's actually going to look like. but Well, we can assume it looks like that, but we right. didn't find a floor plan. But in all the renderings, I saw no courtyard. And this is probably from, you can figure, the western elevation. And you can see your favorite blue glass, right? There we go. But we don't see much shading. To the west, no. you need vertical shading. So it seems to be another sort of hermetic invasive thing. Yes. And it's particularly a shame because John Hera would have done it better because he was respectful of what's adjacent, which is East West Center, right? Yes, exactly. So what are we doing? And we got some suggestions here in the last couple of minutes. Let's okay. move on to the next yeah. picture here. Yeah. Which is our favorite, also our permanent background picture that like nature is so overwhelming. Exactly. Like the jungle rolls in. Exactly. And I'm a tree enthusiast. You are. As and you know. and I, these magnificent trees are right there on the campus. Work yeah. around them. Yeah, yeah, work yeah. Ar honor them. You know, and talking beings, uh, you know, giving optimistic suggestions and, and, you know, the architects who also designed the executed school of architecture, as many of the buildings you had just, you know, uh, assessed last, they were done by the Architects so who did this magnificent building that we talked about and cheered last time. This yeah. is the arts building. So yeah. please, you guys go back to where you came from. They yes. incorporated yes. that tree and made tree the main uh, element. Mm -hmm. And so, and the other tree is in front of um, that Hemingway Hall. And I was, when I took the picture, there was this guy on the left and he saw me taking the picture and he said, what a fucking fig this is, you know, I never recognized. So that enthusiasm yeah. we expect to be about yeah. buildings as well as, yeah. as for that where you don't Correct. get it. So how can we get that next picture here? This is our tropical yeah. tutor, Bill, who went to the UK to come up with this little suggestion here to basically do what you did with yourself, exactly. grow a beard. Grow a beard. And I basically call it basically the, um, the foliage approach. That's right. Where you grow sort of leaves around mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. And this is a UH Manoa tradition because down there, this is the original engineering right. building who had fig vines. Creeping fig. That's so right. there you go. There it is. Go to the next picture. You wanted to talk to me about something? Well, you know, this. you were telling me that this is a picture of some a building you designed, but I don't see a building in there. Well, I just that, see a meadow. And, and this is sort of my 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 suggestion is here. Be le in such a beautiful landscape on campuses, be less building, be, yeah. be more nature. And Correct. the next picture is my project from the other side, which I built for Germany's oldest university. And uh, again, uh, we also, it, it got published in Arc Daily. So you want, I think, Architects who are nationally or internationally recognized, as I Pei was, you know, as as um, SOM was, as Edward Durrell Stone was, yeah. 
uh, or architects who have been locally really of high standard, as John Hera, right? Correct. And, and they need to get jobs on the campus here. Next picture is my previous school at the University of Arizona where they did that. Eddie Jones, who's a local hero of international recognition here, designed the School of Architecture. At the bottom left, this is north where the sun is not coming that Correct. often. Right. And, but to the south, he was making the sort of metal grading, and this is what Bill suggests in detail to do for the architecture school and basically Grow plants on it. Uh, do that. Uh, it is a metal grading that, 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 grows, that grows on top of it. So next picture is given that foliage theme. Mm -hmm. um, also, you might want to have, you have the potential of, of professors who come from practice. So there was Bruce Etherington here who did this great little uh, experimental, environmental uh, little uh, plug-in uh, cell right, pavilion right, at the right, very right, top right, right there, correct, right? Correct. And that was supposed to basically be implemented all over campus. And the, the, the other pictures are from our tropic here, David Rockwood, who was participating in the solar decathlon and national competition. Again, since politics seemed to be virulent for yes, UH, it didn't yes. make it, but it, but it should have made it because it's, it's and again, David has been recognized by Kenneth Frampton up there for the house for his parents. So he truly has, again, the, uh, the credentials to, to, to do stuff like that. All right. Uh, next one, uh, you know about that one by now. Yeah, and tell me again what the title of this uh, is. We call it the Tropical Textile up for Manoa. Okay. So it was another suggestion here for the, for the university that we did. We said it's an exoskeleton done with Gray Pacific Rock Mountain Precast, John, um, uh, Les Campers down there. It lets the breeze go through. Sure does. It lets the wind go through. It's got plants around it, it. But it keeps the sun out. It keeps the rain out. And it's also in a safe enclosed space, but not an oppressive one. It is. It is. So with that, we basically close that sort of potential to be a reintroduced right. theme of basically foliage and green, mm -hmm. right, in, in various ways. And the we come to the light. other theme that we already said we had identified. And this building has it too, by the way, the roof has this little thing on top of their next picture. So that theme is, and you came back, when you did your first assessing up their yeah. field assessment, you came back and you said, oh, well, I think there's a theme, and that theme is courtyards. Here. Because a lot of the best buildings at UH, uh, we discovered, have courtyards. They make mm -hmm. things a lot more yeah. livable. They yeah. are spaces where people gather. There's a great deal to recommend courtyards as a theme. Yeah. And uh, the buildings that we discovered that we liked, mm -hmm. uh, we have a, we have that list that's on the left hand side, which is yeah. your writing. Of well, it, it was us sitting down where we did like we're structuring the show. Yeah. We were writing down the names and the dates, and then we came up with that little symbol for courtyards. Right. And this is this is Martin's from Martin's brain, the architectural brain. A little square symbol to show yeah, that, yeah. that there's a courtyard in those buildings. So we phase out. We got 30 seconds left with yeah. two uh, uh, polemic propositions for potential courtyard right. so next, next one is. And so this is Primitiva One, which is a circular building that has essentially a courtyard down the center mm -hmm. in the core and an open space. And it's certainly referential to the uh, show we had about the other cylindric student towers that yeah. don't have a central courtyard, so right. that's why they're a little hot, so we hope to improve it for this one. Correct, And, and last but not at all least and here. Not, and not, yeah, this is the compute, wait, 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 this is the container mm -hmm. courtyard cabana. Yeah. Cabana. We call it cabana. Cargo courtyard Cargo. So I didn't, I didn't uh -huh. have the name right, uh -huh. I apologize. And uh, yeah, and I'm researching the history of uh, container shipping right now, and containers are something that should be reused for housing and, and other words. It's a post-contact tradition that we build upon, but in this yeah. case here, we're currently developing this here in school. We try to do the most with the least yeah. for the ones who are the most in need. Yeah. So we space out the containers eight feet, which is their width, and then we can use the container doors for the courtyard doors. Correct. So you make a space that's it's an, a 40 foot times eight, 320. Yeah times two, the method is the all-American buy one, get one free, right? Exactly. So you've got an enclosed space and an open mm -hmm. space, and enclosed mm -hmm. space and an open space. But again, just in the tradition of the theme of courtyards, and obviously evolving that because today we got more urgent needs than we had in the exactly, past, right? Exactly, for, for housing people. So with that, we're going to phase out. Um, see you next time. And until then, please stay very uh, educatedly exotic and exotically educated. Thank you.